You're listening to the Veterinary Innovation Podcast. You're listening to the Veterinary Innovation Podcast. My name is Sean Wilkie, and along with my awesome co-host, we interview the innovators in this space every week. Excited to get started today. Ivan, please go ahead and introduce today's guest. Hey, I'm Ivan Zach, and uh, before we jump in, I just wanted to give a shout out to all my friends and family and the team in Ukraine. So this is a, this is a tough episode today to record, but uh, we safely relocated everybody in Ukraine uh, who we have, and they're actually some of them continuing to work uh, considering this situation, and some of them find it distracting, uh, and some of them are sitting in the basements and uh, hearing the bombshells uh, with kids for four days without food, uh, which is devastating. So, but we want to show that we're not disrupting and the producers on the background of this uh, podcast for the last three years were Ukrainian and uh, they continue to deliver. So we will continue and uh, we will live through it. So Sorry for the sort of a little bit of a tragic start, but Tina uh, is our guest today. Tina Weisman is the Vice President of Product Strategy at MWI Animal Health, a leading distributor of animal health products and services and a part of a Mary Source Bergen. Tina has nearly 25 years of product development and commercialization experience in healthcare, having held executive leadership roles in product management and operations, spanning medical devices, cloud-based solutions, data and analytics, and consulting and staffing services. Tina holds a master's degree in education and certification as a Lean Six Sigma Green Belt, as well as a new product development professional. Tina, welcome to the show. Thank you for finding the time. Well, thank you for allowing me to join today. It's a, an honor to be part of this discussion, especially in light of what's happening in Ukraine. So I'm honored to be part of this discussion today. Thank you. So uh, MWI uh, are the longstanding uh, friends of us, and uh, I, I worked with them. I don't know if you know the history, but MWI were investors in SmartFlow, which is the product that I've built and brought to market with them. Um, so we have good relationship with them and, uh, and very excited to have you here. But MWI is a leading distributor on the market. They're a highly technological company as well. Uh, so we want to talk today about leveraging technology and solutions for both practice enablement and client engagement. So the client bet to client uh, relationship are evolving. And uh, what is what are the new things that Amerisource brought to MWI since their merger? And uh, what are you guys working on inside of MWI? Well, you know, it, it's been interesting for me because I will share that I've been at the organization just a short period of time. It's really given me the opportunity to really assess what's happening in the industry and understand some of the shifts, you know, in the market and the dynamics that are occurring. And, you know, if you look at things like the the changes in sort of the pet owner vet relationship and what pet owners are really looking for, it's really an exciting time. And Amerisource Bergen is really helping MWI as we look to become a tech forward company to help close the gap on some of the solutions and services that pet owners are looking for and that vet practices are looking for. So let me expand on that a little bit, if I may, just for a moment. So if you think about sort of where we sit today in technology, right, you think about sort of our subscription-based economy, and you think about the ease with which you can stream your music services and the ease with which you can stream movies and so forth, right? So what we are looking at is how can we enable that type of subscription model in the vet industry that also helps pet parents? And my point is really around sort of meeting the vet clinic where they're at and the pet parent where they're at. So I'm really excited to talk a little bit more about that today, but certainly want to defer Ivan and Sean to you for more questions before I just start rattling on about how excited I am. Yeah, I think I think we want to get specific. Like what initiatives do you guys have that are really exciting? I mean, somebody in your position has awareness of everything that you're working on, but let's let's just jump into the weeds and what's exciting. Sounds great. Yeah, you know, one of the things that we have um, recently brought to market is what we call our MWI Easy Care Plan. And what this really does is it really enables the vet to remain the most important source source of information for pet parents. Um, it enables um, the pet parents to sort of 
think through that perceived high cost of veterinary care and move into that subscription model. So really what we're doing is we're saying, we want to help the vet clinics be able to provide to pet parents the ability to acquire their services such as you know, basic diagnostic care, basic visits, vaccines, parasiticides, et cetera, on a monthly subscription basis. What that does is it really helps you know, normalize the financial quote burden to the pet parents of being able to acquire that kind of care, but it also enables the vet practice to engage with that pet parent on a different level because what we have done is taken over the administrative and the marketing challenges associated with those kinds of plans, and we've enabled some of the digital communications using our Ally DVM communications methodology that gets right to the pet parent immediately, and what it does is it provides visibility to the pet parent to this ability to procure these services for for their pets at a financial cost that is reasonable to them, but that also enables the vet practice to ensure that the pet parent is remaining compliant with the type of preventative treatments and so forth that they need in order to maintain their pet's health. So what does that look like, Tina? So the first thing is we can customize a plan for the vet clinic that enables them to determine exactly what they want in their plan. We like to call it sort of customize and automate. And what we say is we customize the plan design and the pricing. So we work with the vet clinic and we say, what is it that you want to include in your plan? And how do you want to structure it, right? So you can structure it based on size and type of pet, so small, medium, large. You can design the plan based on junior or senior puppy. But what it enables the vet practice to do is to say, I want to include those components of preventive care in my plan that are specific to the type of treatment that I want to provide to the pets in my practice. Then we automate the plan administration and marketing by engaging our allied EVM communication so that we can communicate to the pet parents before they even come to the vet clinic what's available to them in this plan. What we've seen as a result of that, at least in the last six practices that we've implemented, 46% of the pet parents have enrolled in this plan before ever setting foot in the vet clinic. So it demonstrates the power of leveraging the subscription-based model with the specific type of preventive care that the vet wants to provide to the pet parent and that the pet parent knows they want to leverage for their pets. The other thing that we do is we have a payment platform by partnering with Premier Vet Alliance that helps us with this plan. And what it does is it takes the whole burden of uh, obtaining the payment from the pet parent off of the shoulders of the vet clinics. And that enables the vet clinic to really focus on the care for the pet and not worry about the back-end administration of making sure that the plan actually works. And that's really been one of the biggest barriers in enabling this type of subscription-based model for a lot of vet clinics, which is the administrative burden and the payment burden of, you know, ensuring that they're getting the payments that they need from the pet parents. They want to focus on providing care for the pets, right? That's where they want to focus. This enables them to do that. And it enables the pet parents to be able to do it in a way that keeps the cost equal each month so they know exactly what they're going to be paying for. Instead of saying, oh my gosh, every time I go to the vet, I'm paying, you know, 400 bucks. Now I'm saying I'm paying, you know, a certain amount every single month that really normalizes the cost. I think the other thing that we've seen in this model is that it's been a benefit to the vet practices, not just from a compliance perspective relative to the care of the pet, but they've actually seen an uptick in their revenue. Because what they're seeing now is, instead of the pet parent saying, okay, fine, I'll take one fleet tick and heartworm dose, thank you very much. Now we're seeing, oh, I can get that as part of my preventive care plan, that's fantastic. So now you see an uptick in the compliance relative to the parasiticides, but you also see the pet parent be much more open to other products and services that the vet may offer to them, such as dental, for instance, because now it becomes more financially feasible for them to engage in those additional services. Yeah. So it sounds like you've put an interesting wrapper around all of this. Is it is it a piece of software that both sides get to interact with? What's the actual technology behind the great idea and, and the value that you're providing? Yeah, that's a great question, Sean. It is a technology platform, and it's something that both the vet clinic and the pet parent interact with. Now, I will say that the Ally DVM communication piece is behind the scenes relative to the interaction with the pet parent, right? That's really something that we install seamlessly for the vet clinic to connect the dots with this technology platform that enables the preventive care plan to be customizable and seamless for the pet parent. So it's a really robust technology platform that 
integrates with the PIN system, the practice management system. It enables the vet practice to identify what's happening in terms of, you know, the number of doses that the pet parent is still needing to utilize for their pets. It also allows the pet parent then to pay through that platform and know exactly what kind of services that they're going to be getting as a result of the plan that they sign up for, for the type of pet that they bring forward. It's so interesting that the, um, you know, the, the wellness plans were originally brought in by uh, Banfield and that's been, you know, around for last 10, 15 years. And then a lot of practices were trying to do it single-handedly. And uh, then beyond that, there were two products that really delivered that on the market. It was uh, Petly Plan that I think is now dead by IDEX. And then another one, VPC, I think they're called. And then I think VCA was using those. And the challenge with those is making sure that the customers sign up for it. And the challenge that I've seen with these products, which one of them I ran, um, at IDEX is that there's a two-step sales process. Every veterinarian wants this subscription. Um, and uh, sort of a side note on this, it's interesting. I was just as you were talking about, and I was thinking about the entire subscription in the veterinary medicine. It's almost like the coffee went uh, through with the invention of Keurig. Uh, they were looking at how to now, you know, disrupt the coffee space, uh, which was fairly you know, it was a commodity and then they did come up with it. So one capsule, you know, is sold way more expensive than everything else, but it's sort of that kind of subscription, if you will, because you're buying these consumables to a device that you're just entering it into. So I think that that's what's happening in the bed industry. It was sort of a one purchase and then now it's sort of that subscription of smaller fractions of it. But uh, the challenge that everybody bumped into is veterinarians loved to have this extra source of revenue, but they hated to sell it. That's the main challenge that they have. So driving that through Ally DVM, who has you know already a significant coverage, uh, I think that's a great idea. What does that go-to-market strategy looks like? How is it? Is it served through the application to the client? Because if you're in, are you relying on the inside sales team? Like how do how are those customers served with the potential to buy this and sign up for it? And, and so when you say customer, do you mean the vet practice directly or do you mean the end customer, the pet parent? Well, the two-step process that vets hated uh, and text is that you are signing up and saying, okay, there's this application that I can provide to my customers and they sign up on it, but they hated the fact of saying, hey, would you sign up for this? So if you circumvent that and avoid veterinarian talking to client about it and serve it otherwise and sell it digitally, then that could be the key. But I don't know what's your kind of, how is go to market? How do you sell it to the end customer? Great question, great clarification. So we really do leverage the power of LIDVM and the communication messages that we can email directly to the pet parents. So we have a set package of messages that we send that are triggered by events such as, oh, you came in for your puppy visit or you're about to come in for your puppy visit, right? So that we can create a sort of drip email campaign that enables the sale to happen relatively seamlessly. And that's why we're seeing such an uptick in terms of the pet parents subscribing to the service prior to even coming into the vet's office. The other part to that that's really helpful in terms of enabling the dialogue at the vet's office is the fact that the pet parent has been exposed to this concept. So if they don't sign up for it immediately, they already know about it, right? They've received the email messages that indicate to them what this is, why it is a value to them, and how it helps them keep their pet healthy. So when they go into the vet's office, the vet practice simply opens the door by saying, did you receive the messages about our preventative care plan? Oh, the pet parent says, yes, I did. We really want to get you engaged in that pet parent because it really helps ensure that your pet stays healthy, right? So now you've really lowered the barriers to resistance as it relates to the ability for the pet parent to be aware of what's happening and for the vet practice to sell it in to the pet parent. I would also share that one of the, I think, innovations that we've done as an organization is we've stood up a specific team called the Technology services and strategies solutions team. And that's a team of 12 people that are specifically focused on technology solution sales to our vet practices. So they can help strategize with those customers how best to engage in that kind of dialogue with their pet parents so that they can effectively sell this to the pet parent. And by sell, I really mean sort of exposing them to the concept that they've already seen through the email messages and drip marketing that they've received from Ally DVM. And because we have what I would consider sort of the 
canned campaigns, for lack of a better term. It isn't even something that the vet practice has to spend a lot of time thinking about. Like, what do I want those messages to be, to say, to do? And when do I want them to be sent? Because we can say, we've already formulated that for you. Now we can customize that based on what the vet practice wants to do, but we make it really easy for them because we just say, this is what you would need to install from a communications perspective for the email messages, and then turn on the trigger to get those messages over to your pet parents. So we've really enabled this to be a very seamless solution for the vet practice to offer to their pet parents. That makes sense. And from the customization point of view for each particular client, where does that happen? Is that in the PIMS? Is that in your sort of front end that was developed and then you provide it to the customer and that sort of builds the menu of what you need to do? And where is it done? Is it done at the level of the clinic? Right. So it's done at the level of the clinic and it is in the um, front end of the preventive care technology platform. And we code the items that they'll be using as part of the preventive plan with a certain sort of moniker that identifies those items as things that will be included in the preventive care plan so that they can then be referenced in the practice management system so that the vet knows what is included as part of the plan. So it's, it's a combination of those two technologies coming together to serve the plan. And for the clinic, so how how does that work as the business model? So what is the cost? So if veterinarians are listening and thinking, oh, I would like to learn more about this. So what is the cost uh, for the veterinarian and how is that all structured? Sure. So it's a monthly subscription for the vet practice. It's $3.95 a month. That includes the Ally DVM subscription. So by the way, it's not just the email uh, marketing campaigns that you get from Ally DVM. You actually get the full core functionality of Ally DVM. So retention calendar and other functions that Ally DVM brings forward for the vet practice. So it's a very, very valuable implementation for the vet practice. And it includes the preventative care plan, of course. Now, the individual pricing to the pet parent level is really determined by how the vet practice wants to structure that program, right? So I can't really give you a pricing at the pet parent level because it's so highly customizable. So that's the piece that, you know, is something that the vet practice gets to determine. But in terms of the specific monthly cost, it's $3.95, includes Ally DVM and your preventive care plan. And then the pet parent pays a monthly subscription to be part of the plan. So it helps from a revenue generating perspective, first of all, from the vet clinic because of the subscription cost that the pet parent is paying, but also enables the vet to have that interaction with the pet parent really around some of the other products and services that they can provide to the pet parent as well to maintain compliance. Because, you know, one of the messages I think that, that really resonates with our vet clinics, it isn't just about dollars and cents, right? In the sense of how much more money can I make on this? It's a couple of things. One is, how can I help your pet be the healthiest it can possibly be and live the longest life it can possibly live, right? Number one. Number two, how can I provide the most value to you as my client to be able to provide services to you that you might otherwise look elsewhere for? You think about the you know rise in online retailing, for instance, right? So instead of the pet parent thinking, oh gosh, I've got to go run to the big box retailer or you know go to some sort of other online outlet to get this. Now I get it right for my vet practice and I get it as part of this bundled solution, right, for the preventive care practice. So it really is creating a win-win solution for the vet practice as well as for the pet parents. Yeah, no, it's fascinating. And I mean, it's something that me and Ivan have talked a lot about over the last couple of years on the show. Tina, I think, you know, the, the obvious question is if we've got clinics out there that maybe are not working with MWI currently, they want to find more information about this. Maybe this is something that makes them think about the way that they're doing business as a whole, because they definitely see it as a competitive advantage and a unique offering. Where do we send them? How do they find more information out? Yeah, that's great. If they want to go to our website, mwih.com, then click on solutions and services, they will be able to find our MWI Easy Care program and find out more information about that. There's also an online contact form that can provide their information and we'll be back in touch with them to discuss the plan in greater detail and help them get set up and move forward with it. That's so great. Yeah, fascinating and a really interesting conversation, Tina. Your wealth of knowledge is obvious and, uh, and really interesting when it comes to this new offering. We like to wrap up every episode the same way. So we've got a couple of questions for you. First question is a book, a TED Talk, a YouTube video, something that you found interesting and inspiring uh, in your career so far. Sure. I actually have two books, if I could share. Um, one is called The Unicorn Project. It's written by Jean Kim. And it's really a book about developers, digital disruption, and thriving in the age of data. 
So it's really around how do you disrupt, right? And how do you do it effectively? From a product development perspective, it really has some very key questions. As we start to think about, you know, the work that we do in MWI and Amerisource Bergen, you know, how do our daily actions improve the lives of our customers, right? So our focus is how do we bring the best solutions forward for our customers and how do we do that? in an age of disruption, right, in digital data and technology. So that's one. The second is one that really has resonated with me both from a professional and personal perspective. And I think you think about some of the challenges our vet practices are facing as it relates to staffing and retention, recruiting and being pulled in so many different directions and all the things they've got to do every day. And like, how do I manage all of those things? And this is actually called essentialism. It's the Disciplined Pursuit of Less by Greg McCown. And this is all about giving yourself permission to stop trying to do it all, learn how to focus on the vital few things rather than the trivial many, and really invest in the right activities. So it goes hand in hand, certainly with product development, but it also goes hand in hand with how do I more effectively manage my vet practice? And I think this is a book that can really lend itself to that. Excellent. And the second question we usually ask from our guests, is there innovator in the industry or another interesting person that you would uh, suggest inviting to this show? Certainly. I mean, I would suggest certainly continuing on the trend of you know, these preventive care plans and really understand why they matter for the future of veterinary practices to speak to Craig Frazier, who's the managing director of Premier Vet Alliance, one of our partners in this endeavor. He can really speak much more in depth around the technology and the capabilities that it brings forward for the vet practices. Thank you so much for listening to the Veterinary Innovation Podcast. If you want to hear about our new episodes, please follow us on any social media channel. Also, you can check out our website at veterinaryinnovationpodcast.com. See you next week.